Kenyans watched minute details of the terror attack at Dusit D2. And over and over again, the thin line between right to information and right to security was crossed. To an extremist group like Al-Shabaab, media coverage of the attack gives mileage to their cause of spreading fear amongst target nations, especially Kenya. However, at the age of digital media, live coverage of the events remain inevitable. What are the dangers? Terrorism is a crime, and especially when it's going on, it's a crime that is still ongoing. And so the facts have not yet been verified. People and their relatives are in a state of shock and panic. So I think it's time where there has to be a very step-by-step -step verification of information before it is released to the public. No sooner had the sharp lenses of cameras caught exclusive images of the terror scene than graphic, gory and bloody photos and clips surfaced online for the world to see. One is left to wonder how exposed to the world was Kenya. We have to understand that terror is an emergent thing. The issue with terrorism is fear, that they want to be able to propel fear within a nation. So journalists have to, be, to remember that they are given first to the well-being of the citizens. So they have to make a distinction as to when they are dispelling truth and to when you know, they are fueling the agendas of terrorists. What is the role of media in terrorism coverage? Journalists have a higher calling and higher calling is uh, requires of them to be very objective and sometimes to recollect themselves. You cannot show pictures that cause emotions, pictures that cause fear, picture, pictures of victims or relatives um, of uh, those that have been affected or have been killed or have been maimed. According to MCK's Handbook on Reporting Terrorism, the journalist must stay calm, clear and accurate and be compassionate. There must be decency and human respect. Families must be informed before their deceased relatives' names are released to the public. Choose language that does not sensualize. How does one balance between showing reality and respecting humanity? You must remain objective. You must uh, uh, be governed by ethical conduct and your work must always be substantiative and your work must always be background checking. Your work must be context, moderation and balancing between the right of people to know and privacy and taking care of people's emotions is very important in journalism. No rage was expressed with more than after American publishing house New York Times published an article that included graphic images of dead victims. Question is, does the media council closely regulate media content published outside the country? A public reprimand, a demand for apology, a demand for retraction. We could uh, suspend there is a disciplinary hearing. Showing pictures that are not sensationalized but give a real sense of the terrible situation. Read in part of the response of New York Times, how is the MCK going to respond since the images remain? We have, um, we have a meeting with the New York uh, top leadership later tonight to discuss that from the executive editor and other associate editors and other to discuss the matter. So we took it out of uh, a public deliberately because direct threats were being issued against the general. A 2017 report by Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe on the role of media and terrorism, however, argues that... Modern terrorism is media terrorism. The media are attracted by extreme terrorist acts not only because it's their duty to report on any major event, but also because the dramatic and spectacular aspects of terrorism fascinates the general public. Today's terrorists exploit this and act in a way which will attract maximum attention around the world. As far as media is concerned, it should avoid playing into the hands of the terrorists by restricting the dissemination of graphic photos and over sensational information. Maintaining the dignity of the nation and the people so unfortunate to be victims of a terror attack is a principle, but a gameplay continues between objectivity, reality, and humanity. Kristin Kamau, KUTV.